As most people know, rapper BG, formerly of the Hot Boys, is currently serving a 14-year prison term for weapons charges. Now, just exactly how he got in that predicament is an interesting story. November 3rd, 2009, Christopher Dorsey, AKA BG, was pulled over in a Chevy Tahoe by the New Orleans police in a routine, quote unquote, traffic stop. He just so happened to be with two other guys in a car full of guns. The Tahoe uh, BG was driving had been stolen from an Avis rental car outlet. The two men with him, Demonde Pollard and Gerard Fettison, worked for Wild Telly Hankton, who at the time had been declared public enemy number one by New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu. There were three guns found in the car, two were stolen. Pollard tried to say the guns were his. He ended up getting a 30-month prison term for uh, sort of obstructing justice in that case. BG went to jail. He already had a lot of felonies, so he was facing a lot of time. Not long after he went to jail, he was recorded on the jail phone calling Fettison, and he referenced the fact that he and Walter Mooney Porter, who was Wild Telly Hankton's chief hitman, both of them have been convicted of many murders and are both serving life sentences right now, that he and Mooney Porter had recently tried to shoot two people in a drive-by on behalf of Telly Hankton. You know what I'm saying? I just got sick of it. And one point in time, this nigga been here like, wow. Well, about 35, 40 calls, you know what I'm saying? You, see, you know what I'm saying? Ain't like four, five, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but you got one call that calls more than my house. Gerard Fettison, uh, the man who received that phone call, ended up getting 22 years as part of the Hankton Rico case uh, for obstructing justice and possession of firearms. Now, why such a long sentence for Fettison? Well, the federal government presented uh, a lot of evidence that Fettison was also one of Telly Hankton's shooters, that he had been involved in several attempted homicides uh, over the years. So that's why he got 22 years, and that's the guy who BG was riding in the car with, and that's one of the first people he called when he got to jail and discussed past crimes. So it appears that BG really was a hot boy, working for, at the time, New Orleans' most violent criminal organization possibly even as a shooter. It's unclear when BG will be released, possibly as early as next year. Uh, uh, prison photos of him show him looking healthy, happy, uh, and he'll probably be coming home soon. He has already been down for 10 plus years. When he was just 12 years old in 1992, BG got signed to uh, then up and coming New Orleans based Cash Money Records a label that by the end of the decade would be scooped up by mega media conglomerate Universal Media Group and, and it grew to become one of the most prominent labels uh, as, as hip hop, as rap went from one of the most popular things in pop culture to what it is now, the dominant uh, force and source of inspiration in kind of global pop culture. And BG's 1999 hit, Bling Bling, is really kind of a seminal song because uh, the word bling and the phrase bling bling is just a part of normal American lexicon these days. Even the kind of people that watch Fox News say bling. And it's interesting to think that that phrase was coined by a guy who really was from deep in the trenches of the New Orleans streets according to the federal government and according to what he's been convicted of. Now, BG grew up in the same uptown New Orleans neighborhood as Wild Telly Hankton and his family, and Cash Money Records founders, Brian Baby Williams and Slim Williams, were linked to the Hankton family by the DEA very early on, and the DEA claims that they got money from uh, Telly's older cousin or uncle, a guy named George Cup Hankton, as part of the initial cash influx to start Cash Money Records. Not the only money, but some of the money. Now, whether that's true, I mean, the Williams brothers never got charged in anything, so who knows? So in the early 2000s, uh, Cash Money 
at what appeared to be the height of their success, a lot of people started jumping ship. And BG was the first one to go. And then Manny Fresh, who made all the beats from all the seminal uh, hits we remember from back then, bling bling, back that ass up, many other things. Uh, he left in a dispute over getting paid and it seemed like cash money was going down, but as we know, their biggest days were ahead of them. Little Wayne uh, rose up to be, for a while, you know, maybe the biggest rapper in the world in terms of popularity. And Little Wayne went on to have his own record label, Young Money, that, that uh, just signed Drake and Nicki Minaj. And Drake is one of the biggest pop stars of the last 20 years, period. And you, you can't look at a Drake song without seeing the direct line back to the Hot Boys. And at least in BG's case, uh, the Hot Boys really were that and were involved in uh, pretty serious stuff with people like the Hankton's who were as wild as it comes. A wild Telly Hankton, who ended up in 2016 being convicted on a bunch of uh, uh, racketeering and corrupt organization, RICO charges, uh, he and many of the other Hankton family members were given long federal prison terms, but Telly Hankton's not in federal prison. He was also convicted along with some of his hitmen like Walter Mooney Porter of murders by the state of Louisiana and he's currently doing a life sentence in the state of Louisiana. George Cup Hankton uh, uh, cast a large shadow over the New Orleans drug trade from his Holly Grove neighborhood, which is where Little Wayne is also from. On December 7th of 2007, George Cup Hankton was gunned down in the Girttown neighborhood of New Orleans. Years prior to his murder in 2007, he mentored Wild Telly, who was his younger cousin, in the ways of the game. According to those same DEA informants, Baby, Birdman Williams, and Cup Hankton were especially close. One of the murders Wild Telly Hankton's doing his Louisiana life uh, bid for was revenge for the people that killed his older cousin, Cup. For the second time this summer, prosecutors will try Telly Hankton. It's one of our most dangerous and wanted subjects. Now behind bars and on trial again for murder, Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. Back in the early 90s when Cup Hankton was still alive and Telly Hankton was young, uh, the two of them were actually observed and recorded by the DEA hanging out with a lot of different people, but two of the people they hung out with a lot were Baby and Slim, founders of Cash Money Records. Perhaps the whole thing about uh, them getting money from the Hankins just came from the DEA seeing them together. Maybe it's not true. Uh, in the world of entertainment, whether it's Hollywood movies or rap music. And this goes all the way back to the founding of Hollywood, which was founded by predominantly Jewish gangsters from New York, Cleveland, who came out west to start this new business, the movie business. Uh, gangsters and entertainers have always been tied together. I mean, there's only, for young guys who are out hanging out in the nightlife of any city, who has money? Entertainers, athletes, and gangsters. So. The Williams brothers definitely were friends with the Hanktons, who were at one time New Orleans' most feared uh, crime group. Does it mean they really got money from the Hanktons? Maybe, but maybe not. Now, Cup Hankton was just as violent uh, in his day as Wild Telly. He was arrested and charged with multiple homicides, but he beat them all, and then he was eventually killed in 2007. Cash Money Records is, is in ascension. They're big deal. The Hankins are still on the streets, so if they did invest money with cash money, uh, I mean, it seems like they would have got enough back to get out of the streets. But Telly Hankton was known at this time to only sell quarter and half kilos and up. Uh, DEA informants said that he would uh, buy five or six kilos a couple times a month and then distribute them uh, around the neighborhood in uptown New Orleans. He never used cell phones. As Cash Money's first incarnation was starting to fall apart, the Hanktons got into a war with gangsters uh, Darnell Durney Stewart and Jesse Tutu Reed. By 2007, it was an all-out war. 
Derny Stewart and Tutu Reed were arrested for Cuff Hankins' murder, but like most murder cases in New Orleans at that time, they just sat in jail and the charges got dropped and they were back out on the streets and they were back at war with the Hankins, now led by Cuff Hankins' younger cousin, Wild Telly.